Alright everyone, welcome to another Lord of the Rings Heroes of Middle-Earth video with Fat Phil. And I want to talk about my hopes for this game. If you guys missed the first video I put out here, I will link that in the video description down below where I talk about my initial thoughts and gameplay. So I have maybe like three big hopes for this game that I think if Capital Games you know, does this, I actually think this game will be very successful. So let's dive right into this video. Before we do that, I also stream content for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes for those of you who may just be seeing this for Lord of the Rings. So if you guys wanna check out that game, go ahead and do that. We're trying to hit 5,000 subscribers as a channel goal here. And if I hit 5,000, I will relic eight my Wampa because Wampa is king. Yes, this may be a Middle Earth game, but Wampa is still king. All right, um, so let's talk about my hope for this game. The first hope I have is shards. Whoops, whoa, what the? Oh, there we go. That was a weird misclick. I don't even know who that I clicked on. Was that Great Goblin? Um, so here'd be my hope for this game. When you look through this, you can see that it takes um, 15 shards to get to one star. Then it takes 30 shards to get to two stars and then 55 to get to three. So it takes 100 shards to get to a three star character. Beyond that, I'm not sure, but I'm hoping it sort of follows the Marvel Strike Force um, progression of shards where it takes, I think, 810 total shards to take a character from zero to seven star. And I think that's a really good thing that they do because they don't care what, because it kind of combines with this aspect that they don't care what gear level you take a character to because the stars are, you know, needed for other things. And I hope that this game kind of follows suit where they don't really lock your gear level behind what star count your characters are at because I think that's a huge area of monetization that I think Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes who has gear locked behind a star level, I think that's a huge area of monetization that they miss out on simply because you're telling players, hey, you can't even take them to a usable gear level unless they're seven star, which can take a very long time. So I hope this game kind of follows suit with the Marvel Strike Force side of things where they kind of take that gear level requirement for, or, you know, take the gear levels and star levels and kind of separate them and say, like, you can take them to max gear level without the max stars. My second hope is that they follow the almost, what's the wording I want to use here? So the, the raid format, I hope they kind of combine the two games into one. So in Marvel Strike Force, for those of you who haven't played that, your guild raids, there's all these nodes. It's almost like Imagine Conquest, but for your entire guild at once that there's multiple nodes and you, you get assigned, you know, they call it a lane, right? You get assigned a lane and you'll go through that. Uh, and it's cool, but there's definitely some aspects of it that I didn't enjoy. I think one of the biggest problems is that those later nodes were worth a lot more points. So you'd get some players who just wouldn't hit until the end of a raid because they weren't really being a team player. They were just trying to do all the damage possible. So that aspect of it, I didn't like. However, what I did enjoy is that there's a little bit more of a teamwork setting in that Marvel Strike Force because you're, okay, this person needs to take this node because it's gated behind these characters. And this new crate Dragon Raid coming to Star Wars, for those of you who play that game, seems to be similar to that where there's these specific, you know, characters that are required to compete in the raid. The difference with Marvel Strike Force is that depending on what lane you're in, it could require different characters. So I hope for this game, because they have a lot of different tags in here, what I'm hoping is that for um, raids, it'd be like, okay, lane, you know, this section you need hobbits, and then maybe you need some Nazgul, and then um, we're going to need Rohan characters, or Thorin's company, trolls. I think that would be really cool. They try and expand it to make raids a little bit more fun right from the start, rather than just letting you know everybody with everything participate in every single raid. Making them a little bit more specific gives you a reason to level up some of these characters that otherwise you wouldn't use. So I kind of hope that they blend the two systems together, because I think where I like the Star Wars raids, especially where it's heading, is that everybody's going to get the same rewards which there's an individual track for doing better, but that the guild will get the same rewards. That way you're kind of inspiring teamwork, and I hope they do that in this game as well. The So that's, you know, two things, right? So the first thing I said was, you know, gear level and star level kind of separate the two and say so you can get to the max gear level without the max stars. Along those same lines, now I don't know if there's a legendary type character in here. I think there may be. I'm um, just looking through to see. I haven't, you know, again, guys, I haven't been playing this game all that much yet. And I've done, 
you know, about as much research as I feel is, you know, reasonable, right? Like, I don't think there's any character in here yet that is striking me as uh, legendary. But one of the things that I hope for is that they go back to the five-star unlocks for legendary characters. In Galaxy of Heroes, it's really changed a lot, and a lot of that is because they want to require you to have certain gear levels on your characters, but they don't want you, so they, you need to have these specific gear levels which are higher than the, what you know you can achieve without being seven star. So I think if you take away that, again, it opens up that monetization a little bit more, that players are gonna be more inclined to spend on something if they can at least achieve it. And so hopefully I think they follow suit here that they kind of stick with that five star unlock for legendary characters. I think that would be fantastic for this game. There's so many characters in Lord of the Rings that I really look forward to seeing. So they have Strider here. This is a great, you know, Strider. Okay, that's Aragorn. What if we get, you know, the Aragorn who is like King Aragorn, right? What if we even got the Aragorn that we see, not just Strider, but the one who is, you know, leading the battle at Helm's Deep, you know, one of those different characters. Um, I mean, we see that we have, uh, I saw Sam down here. Let's go into our Hobbits, right? So like you've got you've got like Sam Gamgee, right? Who looks like a gardener, right? That's the like it's like the gardener, right? The version we're getting in Fellowship. What if we get a Sam Gamgee with like you know Sting and his sword as he's fighting inside of you know Mordor, right? To get to Frodo, I think that would be really cool. There's a lot of directions. I mean, Pippin and Merry are both versions of them that you're seeing from Fellowship. So what if we got you know the Steward of Gondor, you know, or not Steward of Gondor? I guess like the you know whatever they called um. Uh, Pippin, you know, in his Gondor attire, and same with Merry, right, who's part of the Rahiram. I think that would be really, really cool. Give us those, you know, they can take this so far. They can do a lot with this game and the characters in it, so I am really excited. Again, really hope that they just keep with that, you know, five-star legendary unlock. The The last thing I'll say, I don't know if I said three at the beginning or four, but you're going to get four. The la My last hope for this game is that they kind of go with the slower release of content that I don't want everything all at once. I want this to build. I want them to build this game out. I want them to, you know, make sure that they're taking their time with it and do it right. I don't just want content rushed out to us that's a copy and paste from another game. Like, make it unique to this Lord of the Rings game. You know, steal the best from this game, the best from this game. Because at the end of the day, we all want this to be enjoyable. We want this game to last a long time. And I think Capital Games, as much as people love to hate on them, they've proven that they can take a game and make it last. I mean, Star Wars is going on, I think, seven and a half years, which is insane for a triple B game. So I'm really hoping that this game does the same thing, guys. Obviously, we don't know yet. Again, May the 10th is the official global launch, but I believe you might be able to get access like April 26th. So stay tuned on the channel, guys. Again, I want to release another one of these videos. I don't know how often I'll be covering this game, but hope to do it a little bit more. But as always, guys, smash that subscribe button, leave likes, leave comments, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.